I am so excited for today's episode of The Best of Raleigh. I'm so happy to sit down with someone who is truly making a difference in our community. Maggie Kane, the founder and executive director of A Place at the Table, Raleigh's first pay what you can nonprofit cafe. Since opening in 2018, Maggie and her team have created a space where everyone is welcome to enjoy a delicious meal, regardless of their ability to pay. With a heart for service and a passion for inclusivity, Maggie has dedicated herself to addressing food insecurity while providing dignity and community for all. So let's dive into this journey of turning a simple idea into a vibrant cafe that has served thousands of people with super strong connections. So Maggie, thank you so much thank you. for coming on the Best of Raleigh today. I'm so excited to talk with you. Yeah, me too. Thanks for having me. Yes. And thanks for that great introduction. I love yes. I love the way you said that. Third, serve thousands of meals with strong Connection. Welcome to the Best of Raleigh with your host and real estate expert, Gretchen Coley, owner of the Coley Group. This show is all about the people and places that make the Raleigh area so special. Here's your host, Gretchen Coley. I met you during the pandemic. Yep. I was introduced Ooh. to you by um, a really uh, great team member on our team, Brett Allen. Yep. And we came down and did one of our first Best of Raleigh's. Yeah. Um, we were the first. Place. Thank we you. We were the first, but, but you were one of the several, early yeah. years. So the, the way this podcast started was we started during COVID wanting to support our female business owners who had Love brick it. and mortars yeah. and talk about their businesses. And it's kind of evolved into this. So, so when I came down during the pandemic, it was Whew. chaos in Ooh, front of days. a place at the table. Whew. and But it was a beautiful chaos. Yeah, so thanks. Maggie, how did you land here? How yeah. Tell me about like about you. Sure. Yeah. Um, and it's funny you said beautiful chaos. We use beautiful chaos all the time because <laughs> that's what it is. That's what my life is. That's what a place at the table is. Yeah. Um, so I grew up in Raleigh. Mm -hmm. Um, so grew up here and, um, have been here ever since I, I, um, went to high school here up closer to Wake Forest area. And in high school, I kept thinking I'm going to move somewhere else. I'm going to go to school somewhere else. Ended up going to NC state. Loved it. Um, there's something to say about in-state tuition for sure. Definitely. Um, yeah. Definitely. I have an NC State student, yeah, so like, I'm all yeah, about that. Go pack mm -hmm. and in-state tuition. Mm -hmm. um, so I went to NC State and loved it, um, but still had that mentality of like, I'm going to move somewhere. I'm going to go somewhere. So I actually had been applying for jobs uh, moving internationally, thinking wow. I was going to go live abroad somewhere and, and teach English or work for an mm -hmm. embassy. was really, really interested in that and um, started volunteering at a day shelter my third year of college. And a day shelter, for, for all who may not know, yeah. a day shelter is a place where folks experiencing homelessness can go and be in the day. Get out of the, the climate, the weather, get, you know, get, have a place to be, get yeah. coffee, take a shower. And so, um, I started volunteering at the shelter and I got to know so many folks who were experiencing homelessness and I got to know their stories and their hopes and their dreams and who they were. And they got to know me. Mm. And so I graduated college. About 10 of them came to my college graduation, cheered me on, wow. celebrated me and were just really excited for me. And so in that moment, I knew that this is the work that I wanted to do for a while. And so ended up running that shelter, got to know folks more, getting to know people as that through food for me. I mean, I'm looking yeah. around, I'm seeing the coffee. I'm seeing all this, all this like lovely kitchen in here thinking that people connect in the kitchen. I agree. They connect over food. They connect over coffee. Um, and so I would go and eat with folks who were experiencing homelessness. And that ended up, that took us to the soup kitchen in Raleigh. We have a fantastic soup kitchen that is really fighting food insecurity. Yeah. And so they're feeding 300 people every single mm -hmm. day. And so we'd go to the soup kitchen. But what I found was it was so different than my life experience where I can go to any restaurant at North Hills and I can choose what I want, spend hours with someone. And so I started then taking folks experiencing homelessness out for meals. So we ended up at multiple different restaurants, but a lot of the times people chose Golden Corral. And and my privilege thought that they chose Golden Corral because they can pile their plates on, they're really hungry. They're sleeping outside, so of course they're really hungry. And my friend John changed my life forever. We're sitting at Golden Corral for the second time. And, and I said, John, are you just really, you've chosen this, why Golden Corral? And he said, two reasons. First, I have choice. He said, people make every choice for me from mm. what I eat to where I sleep. I get to choose what I'm eating here. If I want a salad, if I want a waffle. And the second, he said, the more important thing, Maggie, is that I feel seen here. He said, 
being on the streets these past three months, living outside, people treat me as invisible. They ignore me. They don't acknowledge me. Here I'm seen. Mm. Um, and so that was that mic drop moment for me where I thought, okay, we have to create a place where people have choice and people feel seen. And started researching. This was in 2014. Found the pay what you can system. Found that it existed across the country and said, if other places can do this, then then Raleigh can too. Mm -hmm. And we started working on it. We incorporated it as a business in 2015. Applied for nonprofit mm -hmm. status. And then we opened um, in January of 2018. Wow. What a journey. Um, there's so much to unpack. I know. That was a lot. In and that. I speak pretty fast. It, so. it, you do. And I talk fast, yeah. too. So I'm with yeah. you. I like the talk. Like, Southern girls, yeah. we can we talk, talk, right? Fast. Yes. So I want to just dive in a little bit to the pay what you can model. Yes. Because I don't know. That was not something I'd ever heard of no. before I met yeah. you. Very unusual. So tell us a little bit about how that works. Because I would imagine that's that's a scary thing Absolutely. to be buying food that's perishable, Absolutely. creating menus, having Absolutely. volunteers, and yeah. you never know what your day is going to look like, right? Absolutely. Um, and still to this day, we never know what our day is going to look like. <laughs> I think that's for all of us, right? Um, I don't but, either. Yeah, exactly. I mean, the real estate business mm -hmm. for sure. Um, so Pay What You Can is very unusual, um, very different. There's about 10 other Pay What You Can cafes across the country. They're all very different. Um, different areas, different names, different selling different food, open different hours. Hours. So in Raleigh, um, a place at the table, um, we, I'm going to just visual, allow you to visualize yeah. it. You walk in, it looks and feels like a normal restaurant. You mm -hmm. wouldn't know any different um, until you get up to the register. By then, you've smelled good food, you've heard good music, you've seen fun photos, and we have a giant mural with bright colors, and, um, you know, you've, you've just, it's felt like a normal restaurant. Um, it's only, again, until you get up to the register, and then you see the suggested pricing model. You see photos folks running around the cafe with volunteer name tags. Um, and so all of our prices on the menu um, are suggested. So if you order a waffle, if you order a latte. And the waffles are out oh, of no, this I know, world. I know. And you walk in, you immediately smell waffles. Ooh, and you're like, okay. oh my gosh. Um, and so... So they, you get a waffle and a latte, we'll give you a suggested price, say $13. You can choose to pay that price. You can pay more and pay it forward for someone else. You can pay less. We know that some weeks all you can afford is less, and that's totally cool. Um, if, you, if you don't pay less, can't or don't want to that day, you can volunteer with us. Um, we see about 100 people a day who are volunteering alongside our staff, um, coming in and, and volunteering for their meal or volunteering for service hours, volunteering for, mm. um, you know, just because they want to communicate and and then we also feed families for free mm -hmm. so there's lots of ways to you know plug in and how and, and utilize the pay what you can model mm -hmm. um, we you know I think the coolest thing is back to what you said about connections is our mission is community and good food yeah. for all regardless of means so we use good food as a tool towards creating community building connections mm -hmm. bringing people together and and it were it works. that is so beautiful because I don't know if you know this about me but I grew up in poverty mm. and and I grew up in a very food insecure, housing oh. insecure, but we, you know, always kind of figured it out. Yeah. But my mom was, yeah. was, um, had some, had some issues and she was a single mom. And wow. so I've lived in that and it was such a beautiful thing. And I, and I've always felt that way too, that food creates connectivity, yes. Yes. that there is no better way yeah. to bond with someone, right. to actually have a functional conversation and really get intimate with them than there is over a table. So like Absolutely. we've bought Thanksgiving dinners and done things like that yeah. because we just believe that being around a table and breaking bread together yes. is how you connect. Absolutely. And when I was down at a place at the table, the first time I met you, um, you there was a, a mom with her four kids. Mm -hmm. They all had masks on. You could tell that she was super stressed out. Yes. And you were doing the token system yes. at that. I, yeah. I don't know if you still do that or yeah. not. And, um, and you know, I got to just stand there and watch her navigate that. And, yeah. and what I loved so much about it was not just the connectivity, but it was not giving a handout. Yeah. It was a hand up. And I Absolutely. think so many um, philanthropic entities use that, yeah. but you embody it. Yeah. It is, you do what you can when you can come in. We're going to love on you. We're yes. going to give you something that yes. makes you feel special. And I would imagine that for those people that are volunteering for their food, what a beautiful thing to do during yeah. the day yeah. instead of a day shelter. Yes. Like Absolutely. you come purpose. in you and you, you have a purpose. You give back to yeah. the community that's giving to you. And all of a sudden you're not, you're not yeah. getting something. Yeah. You're giving something. Yeah. And that exchange of energy 
has got to change them in a little bit of a way, right? Absolutely. And I think, you know, what I've learned a lot at a place at the table is that people want to be a part of something that's yeah, bigger than themselves. I agree. They want to, they want to feel connected. They want to be a part of something that has purpose mm -hmm. and value. And, um, I just think it adds value to our lives. Yeah. And so we see that every day at table, 1000% that, that, and, and that's the thing at table is, is we say we're fighting food insecurity, but we're really fighting community insecurity. You're fighting community insecurity for and, sure. Right. And so if you just want a free meal, like, the soup kitchen's great. Go get a free meal, and that's awesome. Um, but if you want to be a part of something, you want to get to know folks from all different walks of life, table is your place. I want to hear a wonderful story. This oh wasn't one of the questions I teed oh, yeah. you up for, but I know you have a million of them. We have a million. Tell me a story, a beautiful story about someone. Maybe they've been coming sure. in for a while. Just, I'm sure you've got something off the top of your head. Oh, I, we have. I have a thousand things I off the top of our head. I mean, the the coolest thing about table is that we get to know so many of these stories that we get to mm -hmm. we get to experience life with people um and 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 be a part of the the joys and the and the sadness right um and that's what that's what happens in community um we have this great i, I think one of my favorites is um um great great person i've known for 10 plus years mm -hmm. i knew him back from the day shelter days that i was working mm -hmm. at the shelter and wonderful human being in and out of homelessness for many, many years. Um, a lot of mental health stuff has experienced a lot of trauma in his life. Mm. And so, um, he started, um, we have a culinary internship program that we, um, at table, we, we, um, have done, uh, over the years, the past couple of years is, um, we'll hire folks from, from, um, you know, any type of vulnerable situation, bring them on. They have to apply. They have to, you know, get the, get the job, be picked. And then they come to onto our staff for a couple of months and they learn everything about the kitchen so the goal would be that then they're learning all the stuff about the kitchen and then we're going to help you um you know we're going to set you up with another job either with us or with someone else and so he came onto our team learned everything about the kitchen you know kept this job he ended up loving it so much he got he um took a class at wake tech started baking learning how to cook um and then as he as he was leaving our internship program because we didn't have a job for him he got a job at one of our partners interfaith food shuttle wow. and has been working there running the food truck for years so so it's just so cool, yeah. right? Um, we have a mom and her son who eat with us several times a week, and and um, you know we're her we're her place, we're her home, and um, she just. Um, got her son into daycare for the first time wow. and, and, and having him come in and it, it's just been, it's been remarkable to see the change that's happened, even being from daycare, even being in our cafe and getting to know our community. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's really neat. So we, and we get to see that all the time. Every day. I know. Every day. I would love, I, yeah, the, stories the stories that you have are fabulous. Yeah. You have a fall fundraiser coming yes. up. Yes. Let's talk about that. Yes, we're so excited. Mm -hmm. um, toast to the Travel and Table, which we'll talk about too. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Um, we do a big event every year, and it's just a blast. Yeah. It's it's not your typical stuffy fundraiser. It is your um, you know giant party. It's it's just a bunch of good people, over 450 people who are just celebrating and yeah. eating and drinking and and having a good time and, and for a good cause and for a good cause. And we're out of there by 8:30, so like you can't beat it. You know, we love I can the early be night. in bed by nine. Absolutely, Amazing. you can have. A it's a really good time from 5.30 to 8.30, and then it's time to go, and everyone leaves. Yeah. So um, we have a good time. We'll raise over 200 k for wow. our organization, which is awesome, and um, helps fund our mission every day. Yeah. So it's coming up November 20th. We're really excited. Um, there's maybe 25, 50, 25 to 50 tickets, so get your tickets if you want to come, um, but well, it's it's such a blast. We'll make sure you have links yes. down below, and we're so excited to sponsor. Yes. Thank you so much for we're putting so that We're so grateful. In the my Gretchen Polly Group is going to sponsor us, so yeah. thank you. Thank you so much. It's a killer group of sponsors, and I'm super excited to attend the event. I think it's going to be a blast. I, and yeah, I think I think everyone will have fun. Mm -hmm. And this this year is going to be our best year yet. We say that every year, but it really is. It, it gets better every it year. It gets better yeah. every year, yeah. So let's talk about um, the, the traveling the table. Traveling table. Yes. yes. I want to hear about this food truck. I haven't... I've seen the photos, yes. but I haven't seen it in person yet. We're so, so excited. How did this concept come up for you? Great question. Um, so a place to table, we've been there since 2018. So been there for almost seven years. And, you know, we get asked all the time, are you going to go start another pay what you can restaurant somewhere? And the idea is that this works in downtown Raleigh. For it to work somewhere else is, is we don't know different areas. Yeah. It would be disingenuous. It would not be authentic. Mm -hmm. um, and so we want to see pay what you 
can restaurants open all over our area, but we want to work with other people that are doing it. So currently in the process of, of working with folks in Durham and Wake Forest who are going to open pay what you can restaurants, which is very exciting. Yeah, that's um, exciting. But for us, we're like, okay, we have, you know, we've got such a great community at a place at table. We've got such a great following. We also are kind of at capacity. We're serving a ton of people, yeah. 200, 250 people a day who need a meal. So, so two mm-hmm. things, what more can we do and how can we extend our mission out and extend our name out yeah. to then invite folks to come back to eat with us um, or generate enough revenue to, to come back and support a place at the table. So it's twofold for sure. Um, so the traveling table will be on the road soon. Um, we have our first event next week and um, we are, it's also our catering arm. So yeah. we uh, can do any catering for anyone. Um, Mm-hmm. Catering, catering with a cause, right? You've heard yeah. that term before. Um, but our food is really good, and um, we'll, our team will bring it to you, and our team will either do that or bring the food truck out. And we're just really excited. We're also going to be working with the Boys and Girls Club of Zebulon to feed to feed those communities and really get to know them and be a part of their community. And that's going to be through the food truck. Through the so food the truck. Money that yeah. you're raising through the food yep. truck will we'll go to them. That's amazing yeah. that you're expanding outside of downtown Raleigh. And we're going very excited. Into Zebulon. We're very excited. Yeah, we we learned. We started working with the Boys and Girls Club over the years and we learned that the Zebulon Club is a club that doesn't have any funding for food. Wow. So those kids, there's 250 kids every night of the week and they don't there's have no food. Snacks. Yeah. So, so we, we, I mean, we obviously are not going to be their funding source for food, but we're, and their only food source, but we're going to be there as often as we can and just getting to know them and getting to know their families and, and giving them a good meal while we get to know them. You know, the Boys and Girls Club just is such a wonderful cause. It's 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 what they do and the security that they give for kids who parents may work and they may be just in a tough situation. It's just a beautiful thing. The mentorship that comes from that. Absolutely mm-hmm. it is. I mean, it's, it's, this is sometimes the only community kids have. Yeah, it really and is. And the only meal they have. Yeah. 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 So you are so passionate about right. what you do. You have never come, been told that before. You have <laughs> come so far from NC State and the idea of what this is. You got to, you, you just knowing running a business, yeah. it's got to burn you a little bit. Yeah. It's got to burn you down a little bit. Of course. What lights you up? Sure. Um, it definitely, the, I think the, it definitely burns us all out a lot mm-hmm. or often because it's I mean, constant work, it's chaos. Heavy. It's, it's constant heavy. chaos. It's, we're also like a part of so closely aligned and a part of people's lives that like it's heavy and it's yeah. sad and we're walking through like really hard stuff with people. Yeah. Um, and so, so that can be really hard, but I think the thing that keeps me going is the, the same thing is, is I get to walk with people in their lives. I get to know their stories. I get to know their hopes and their dreams and their joys and their sadnesses and, and they let me be a part of their life. And so the thing that keeps me going is all the amazing humans that I get to meet in that space every day. Mm-hmm. It's such a gift. I feel like, I feel like, like our whole team, we have the uh, we're the luckiest people. We have the yeah. best jobs in the world um, because there aren't a lot of spaces where you get to do that. No. I mean, I think real estate is similar. You get to be a part of people's lives. It is, and that's really what I love about real estate is there's an intimacy there. Like yeah. you walk into a, a house, yep. you meet with somebody for an hour and a half, they sign some paperwork, yep. and they give you a key to their house. Absolutely, the trust that comes with that. Absolutely, and real estate is heavy too. You know, you're walking through joyous moments, and you're walking through horrific things Sad with moments. people. Yes. And being right there with them throughout the journey is the magic. It's also the hard part. Like there are nights where I lose sleep at night, you know, where I I wake up and all I can think about is their kids or, you know, and and it's not anything you can control. No. You can control what you can control in the moment that you can control it. And then you just got to lay everything else down and know that you've put it all on the mat, right? Absolutely. And that's what we do every day. And so I feel like there's such a common ground there. And I love being able to support Causes like yours. Thank you. Causes like the the women's shelter. Yes. Like there's just so many here. We're so fortunate. We're so fortunate. And I want to just last question for you um, before we go into how to find you yeah. is, you know, Raleigh is a special place. Oh my gosh. Right? Yeah. You grew up here. Yeah. And 
but you chose to stay here. Yeah. Why Raleigh? What are you seeing right now in Raleigh that Definitely. is magical? Definitely. I think this community is the coolest. I think we come together. Mm -hmm. I think we support each other. I think we collaborate together. Um, I am a part of a, a huge nonprofit group. We have over 800 people in this wow. group and we chat, we, we work together, we plan events together. We are showing up, up at each other's events. Um, and I think the same goes for the corporate world and all that. I mean, I just think I have seen such a community here in Raleigh of people just wanting to support each other. Mm -hmm. No one's competing, or at least people in my life I know, yeah. we're not competing. We're really just trying to show up for each other and cheer each other on. And that's cool. And that is unlike other communities that I've traveled to and seen or lived in temporarily. And um, I just, yeah, I mean, I think we're so fortunate. And, mm -hmm. and, and I think also to have an idea like a place table is so unusual, but then to have the whole community support us. They're carrying this and that's rare. They Very. are carrying this and they are not, they are going to keep carrying this. Um, and that just shows the larger theme of collaboration and support. Yeah. And like, we believe in good things. And I think you per per perfectly encapsulated what Raleigh is. Yeah. It's hospitality, it's community, it's connectivity. Yes. It is so many other things, but when you dial it down, yeah. People love living here yes. because of all of those things. Yes. All the other stuff are, is just icing on the, yeah. on the cake. Yeah. But the life you get to live in this town is different yeah. than you're going to live in other towns. So right. Maggie, where can they find you? Yes. Okay. You can visit us um, on our website, tableraleigh.org, but also social media, um, Table Raleigh on Instagram and Facebook. I don't think we're on, what are we calling it? Twitter now? Or what's the other know. word for it? X. 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 Um, we are, I think we're on there, but you don't need to follow <laughs> us on there. Um, but yeah, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook social media um and, and then our website and as you can see maggie is incredibly special oh you're she so nice. is a bright light in the world so any way that you have to support the Thank mission you. that a place at the table is on she would welcome it and love it in fact i think Thank i'm you. gonna have my kids going down and volunteer they're gonna, come volunteer. They're gonna do some dishes yes they're so do some you know dishes. obviously we think raleigh is a really special place to live it's a really special place to be and we hope that you see that too and if if you're looking for some community, if you're looking for some fabulous food, a place at the table is perfect. And yes. if you are looking for real estate, you're thinking about making a move to this town or making a move within Raleigh or the suburbs, we would love to be your guiding light during that process. Mm -hmm. And we will take care of everything from start to finish. You can find us at the Coley Group. And um, we look forward to seeing you at a place at the table yes. and in the next episode of the Best of Raleigh. See you soon. Bye. Bye.